So John, let's imagine we have a customer that they just spin up their first vSAN cluster. How do they migrate their workloads over to it? So there are a lot of different ways and we're going to go through them real fast, um, but hopefully slow enough that everyone can keep up. So the first one is, is just do a shared nothing vMotion. You can migrate simultaneously uh, both the compute and the storage side and, and basically throw those over the fence. Now, some people um, may want to split that up. Maybe they want to do the storage at one time and the compute at the other. So for that, they could use HCI mesh. They could have their existing non-vSAN cluster mount that vSAN data store if both are at uh, vSAN 7 update 2 or newer. And so that way you could do the storage vMotion first, then the compute second. Uh, other options here. We could do, if this is, uh, maybe they're in different sites and they want to do a phase failover, maybe they want to test it, they could do vSphere replication. They could add some SRM on top of that to do a test on a bubble network to make sure that those VMs will boot up and come up how they want them to. Um, other options, if you want to go cross cloud, so let's say we want to do a long distance vMotion, we've got some bandwidth concerns, we want to do this as quickly as possible. Maybe we're migrating to a vSAN cluster that's in uh, a public cloud provider, so maybe VMC on AWS, uh, we can we can bust out HCX. HCX is that Swiss Army knife uh, for crazy migrations. It even has some P2V capabilities built in. Um, other options, uh, just going off the list here, you can even kind of think outside the box. If you've got some backup software that already does replication or can do a backup and a restore operation, you could do a backup, power it off, do a final differential, do a res instant restore. The, really, the, the options are kind of limitless here, but you've got a, there's a lot of different ways. Don't think you need to take downtime, um, you know, and, and there are some techniques like per VM EVC, although typically EVC is less of a concern if you're moving from an older CPU generation to a newer one. What will happen is it'll maintain that older CPU um, ID when it comes in. And then on the next reboot, it'll discover the new CPU features. So you don't don't worry about EVC as long as you're moving forward in CPUs. Wow, that's a lot of options. So if you were to say, though, of those options for just, you know, um, let's say a, a, a single location, they have a few vSphere clusters, and they want to migrate some of those workloads over, what would win out in that sort of a scenario? If it's all in the exact location, uh, vMotion, just okay. start with vMotion. Then if you start getting more exotic needs, start start, you know, uh, scroll back on the video to where I was talking through all the other things and, and then, you know, start adding your complexity in. 